Contemporary urban thinking is really around the city and the re-emergence of the street as the place where public life can flourish. And for us as landscape architects, that's of core interest, it's what we do. We're not just creating office towers, we are creating great public spaces. If the public domain isn't done properly, if it doesn't work as a place for people, a place that people feel comfortable being in, then it's not going to be a place that's loved and owned by Sydney. Barangaroo South, right here on the western edge of Sydney, is a major urban regeneration project. A new city precinct is rising. There's towers, residential, retail, restaurants. It's going to be big and it's dense. But half of this is dedicated to public space. So what does that mean and what kinds of public space do we need? We know we want a civic space that's like a front door to the city. We know we want a nice waterfront path of travel that connects to King Street Wharf, we want to have a neighbourhood park that provides places with shade, that has access to sun, cafes, seats, really simple basic stuff that make good public places. The clear way was to say that we have pedestrian streets, but they're not you know, shopping malls. They are streets open to the sky. They have the water at one end and they have Wynyard Station at the other end. The main thing is really connecting back to the city and how we get connections, how you deliver 70,000 people a day and really meshing it back in with the city itself. The 22 hectare site of Barangaroo is divided into its three sections. The new Headland Park, Barangaroo Reserve is open, Barangaroo Central is in the planning stages and at Barangaroo South, the first development phase, Stage 1A, is almost complete with the next stage on the way. While attention is often focused on the buildings and architecture, getting the public domain right is vital. Where have you come from? We've just come from Margaret Street from Wynyard. Yeah. We just walked down around the Sussex Hotel and now we're on what's Napoleon Bridge, which is essentially the gateway to Barangaroo South when you arrive as a pedestrian. What I like about this is that, boom, we're right down, we see all the way through, so we're smack bang between the two towers. It's very conscious about making sure that you get water views, you know, allowing solar access in, getting light in between, controlling wind. Yeah. When you come off Napoleon Bridge, you can actually see across the water and the view terminates on the church tower in Balmain, and that's another way of finding the device, really. As we're walking through, why do these different ways of applying paving work to help us through or make I us feel into the space? It's, a, it's about wayfinding and it's about a sense of scale as well and you know how you perceive it. Like, a lot of these things are very, very subtle and it's meant to be subtle, it's not meant to be right in your face, but it sort of gives you a cue that yes, this is different, you know, this is the main walkway down as part of the wayfinding experience. It's pretty um, obvious that we yeah, go that way. it's very obviously yeah. that this is where you go to get to the main lobbies of all the buildings, to get to the waterfront, whereas this is kind of like, you know, the fun street. A couple of drinks couple after of drinks hours after on a Friday work. night. Yeah. And while it's one thing to design and plan the public domain for the daytime, there's a whole new dimension that comes into play after dark. To a certain extent, we see the lighting as an extension of the landscape ideas flowing out of the master plan. Rather than looking uh, down from above and trying to sort of plan the lighting like that, we're constantly trying to imagine what it is like to be within that space at night and what vertical surfaces you're going to see rather than the horizontal surfaces that people often concentrate on. A major consideration for the architects was how to ensure that the three new office towers, International Towers Sydney by Rogers Sturk Harbour and Partners, feel of a human scale when you're standing on the street. And while they're tall, they're not overpowering. The most extraordinary thing is we've got these enormous great entrance spaces to these buildings opening onto very tiny streets. And there's a certain tension behind that that's rather interesting. You know, it's pretty compact. <laughs> We were told, you can't have streets 12 metres wide, it's, it's too narrow. Said, what do you mean too narrow? It's perfect, it's human scale. Well, it's been about the experience of condensing down as you walk through the walks and then the, the landscape opens up and all the time you have these podiums that you're running on either side. The more compressed you feel, even if there's a lot of people in it, you tend less to look up to see you know, towers above you and it makes you feel like it's of a human scale. 
While the first development phase, Stage 1A, is almost finished, there will be construction for some time to come. With Stage 1B comes Hickson Park, connecting Barangaroo South to Barangaroo Central, the Southern Cove, as well as the completion of the waterfront promenade, which will allow Sydney siders to walk along the foreshore for the first time. How to plan the waterfront at Barangaroo South required some smart problem solving. We inherited a kind of a guideline that said it had to be 30 metres from the water edge back to the building. And our perspective was that's too wide. We wanted a sense of intimacy on the waterfront as much as an opportunity for big events. And so we looked at a lot of devices to divide the waterfront up. We had always predicted that the material change and the way we've done this, almost in section, will dictate the way people use it. So if you're going to be jogging along this thing, we imagine you're probably doing it here. If you're going to be pushing a pram, strolling, taking it easy, you're doing it between the trees. And then if you're taking time to sit at the restaurants, there's a level change there and we anticipate that people will just hang out longer at that edge, closer to the building. Once the cove's done and once the next stages are done and the whole thing comes together, I think then it'll really start to feel like it is part of the city and in fact it'll be a city of its own. Our moves are not the last moves that will happen there, you know, they're the first ones. It's an evolution, like all great cities, they're all an evolution. If people come here and spend time in our public spaces, if they come on a Friday night and have a bowl of noodles and meander along the waterfront, then it's a success.